Okay. We're gonna be rolling the frame down a steep hill. This is the easiest thing ever. Wear more safety stuff than I'm wearing right now. Take a look at the before and take a look at the after. All right, so we just gotta drift this thing around the corner. Okay. All right, we're going into the turn, going into the turn. And drift, drift, Peter, drift. Fast up, period. What? 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 Step two, remove rear bumper. That was easy. Okay, Peter, I don't know what's gonna happen, but um, let's lift and deal with the consequences later. Ready? Okay, hang on. Okay. What are we attached to right here? <laughs> Peter, he forgot a bolt for a ground wire. I never forget bolts. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Stuck in the gasket or someone forgot a bolt. Peter! All right, we got wheels getting in the way, so let's remove wheels. Okay, that's that's as low as it goes coincidentally, but then that works out coincidentally. Well, it's strong? No. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm either super weak, Peter, or there's something going on in this corner. Yep, just super weak. Oh, there we go. Oh wow, this really isn't as heavy as I thought. <laughs> I thought this was gonna be our save here. Okay, take 10. What is that? Oh my gosh. This is really dumb. <laughs> okay. Put that down. Huh. Uh, I'll set your cup. Oh. That's pretty solid. Yeah. yeah. I like the, uh, our stance. It's, uh, it's a squatted truck. <laughs> it's a squatted truck. So, welcome to Legit Street Cars. Uh, in this video, we are taking the term while you're in there to a whole new level. In today's video, we're gonna be working on my beautiful True Blue Metallic 2002 SVT Lightning, or at least what's left of it. All right, so right now we have to lift the frame of the F-150 so we can get the wheels back on. Our jack is kind of stuck under there. Uh, Peter, do you think you could lift the frame of an F-150? Absolutely. Let's see. Get out of here. Get out of here. Peter is literally lifting a frame with one arm. What? 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 He's so strong. Oh, wait. Oh, my God. Wait, it's, there's no arms now. Oh, jeez. It's actually Max and the, the power of his salmon colored shirt. Here we go. All right, so we're going to be blasting the entire frame on my F-150, which means that we have to strip a lot of it. And we're going to get most of this frame, not all of it, and a lot of the other components that are attached to the frame down to bare metal. I wasn't really planning on this. I just wanted to do head gaskets. But uh, while we're in there and we're waiting on some engine parts that are on back order, we might as well. We might as well just frame off, restore my SVT Lightning. Yeah. Look at how bad low. Look at that. I ripped it. So yeah, lots of while we're in there. So. There we go. Piece of cake. All right. So even trucks from non-rust belt states are going to look a little bit like this once you get the cab off in areas where water and dirt have just been sitting for years. All right, so we just put the wheels back on so we can lower this guy now. Excellent. This is mean. This just looks cool. I just want to do burnouts in this. What lies beneath? Look at all of this factory catalytic converter goodness. Oh, this is worth like $500. Way to do it. There's a lot of room to be made here in the weight of the exhaust system. Did you guys see the shiny new headers I got? Check it out. 
We have long tube headers for the SVT Lightning. These things look like they might flow a little bit better than the factory exhaust manifolds. I'll move this guy out of the way. Get this harness out of the way. All right, we're gonna get these fuel lines out of the way as well. Now we're gonna remove this entire ABS assembly that exposes the frame right there. We'll definitely take care of this bracket as well. All right guys, so we're gonna be removing this entire chunk of harness, all of these lines, everything that's attached to the frame essentially. There we go. Look at this. That's beautiful. We're gonna be able to get all of this. It was funny, so my mom saw the truck after we had just lifted the cab and removed the engine and she's like, who's gonna put that all together? And I'm like, me, mom, she always forgets that like I'm a mechanic. I'm like, me, this is what I do. She's like, really? How are you gonna do all that? And she hasn't seen nothing yet. Well, here you go, mom. Another piece to the puzzle. There we go. This is really heavy. Everything about this truck is super heavy. All right, probably should have taken that off a long time ago. We're gonna be rolling the frame down a steep hill and we're gonna hope that it doesn't just roll out into the middle of the street. This is the easiest thing ever. All right, that was mostly uneventful. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of didn't really think that was gonna go as well as it did, um, but here we are. A bare frame, ready for some blasting. There's some beautiful welds there, Ford. Great job. We haven't even started with the sand yet, and look at this. This is gonna look sweet. Just like my lawn does, because I use Sunday. These nutrient packs from Sunday are the best thing since blasting sand with a pressure washer. Just hook up your garden hose, open the valve, and you're off to the races. And these use effective ingredients that you can pronounce like soy protein, molasses, and seaweed to name a few. So in this pack, they ship me out Lawn Vitality and Lawn Strong. And check out these easy to follow instructions. Today, Lawn Vitality, and it gives you a date range to do the Long Strong. Just follow that and you're done. Getting started with Sunday is super easy. Just type in your address and Sunday uses satellite and geographical data to create a custom lawn care program in seconds. They also send you a free soil sample test kit to fine tune your nutrients even further and everything ships to your house automatically and for free. Guys, it's really simple. I don't know anything about taking care of grass and my lawn used to look like this. I started using Sunday just last year and now my lawn looks like this and like this and like this. I also have neighbors that leave their lawn like this, but because I use Sunday's dandelion doom, I don't have any dandelions. If you guys are anything like me, then your hobby is cars, not lawn care. So let Sunday do all of the work. I spend maybe 15 minutes a month treating my lawn with Sunday. And if you ever have any questions, you can call or text Sunday and an actual live human being will respond. It's an amazing concept. So to get started today, click on my link down below or go to getsunday.com slash legit and use coupon code legit20 for 20% off your very own Sunday smart lawn plan. All right, so we're doing a first pass with water. Uh, we just have this connected to a gasoline pressure washer that I picked up last night, and we're gonna blast the entire frame with water first, and then we're gonna be introducing some sand. So let me show you guys the setup real quick. All right, guys, so here is the setup. I picked up this Simpson pressure washer yesterday from my friends over at Russo Power and Equipment, and it is a 3,000 PSI pressure washer that can flow 2.4 gallons per minute. So we're done blasting the entire frame just to get all of the big dirt and debris off. So we're gonna take that off and we're gonna be installing a wet blasting nozzle like so. So this is gonna pop on just like a normal pressure washer nozzle. But as you can see, we have this hose connected here and it's leading all the way into our bucket of sand. And this is just white play sand that you would buy for your kid's sandbox, it's pretty fine. There's no big chunks of rock or anything in here. So as we pressure wash, this is going to suck up the sand and it's gonna go through the hose and it's gonna automatically feed it here 
and it's gonna spray out with the water because... Because of the Bernoulli principle. So it's basically the same uh, aerodynamic principle that causes airfoils to work when you have a lot of flow perpendicular to a little opening that creates a vacuum here and then it basically sucks all this. So when you have a lot of flow coming out here, which is why we needed the pressure washer, 2.4 gallons a minute is a good flow, and then we'll create a good suction, and it'll suck up a lot of media, and then we'll blast out. All right, so now that you guys have the proper explanation of the Bermuda Triangle Principle, we're ready to get blasting. So you can see this area here that I've blasted with just the pressure washer, and we're not able to get any of this up. I went right up to it. And the reason why this came up so easily is because there had been a few oil leaks, a little bit of brake fluid and stuff on here over the years, and it just kind of softened it up. So right now we're gonna be spraying the water and it's gonna suck up the sand as well, and we'll see what the difference is. Wow, <laughs> look at that, it's beautiful. It's almost like polished now, it's better than factory because we've cleaned it so well. This is very cool. So this is all pretty DIY. We're gonna go through about $75 worth of sand that I picked up at Home Depot. This is about $30 right here. And if you already have a decent pressure washer, you're most of the way there anyway. So for right around $100, we're gonna be able to blast the entire frame ourselves and, and so can you, it's a DIY project. All right, so after about 10 minutes, this is what we've done with this front subframe area, if you will. So this is definitely a weekend long project. I mean, it's gonna take some time. Uh, I would say we're gonna have probably roughly, I don't know, 20 hours into blasting the entire frame just based off of this section. And it will get progressively harder as we need to go underneath the frame. But the sand is doing work. This is looking beautiful. So guys, I'm not doing a time lapse right now because I just wanna show you in real time the amount of effort that this takes. So what you just saw there over the course of about one minute was roughly this section here all the way to that section. So it's not too much work. I mean, the sand works well and it's definitely instant gratification. This is so much fun. Oh yeah, and you don't get dirty at all and wear more safety stuff than I'm wearing right now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a little sandy. <laughs> it's the beach, right? It's the beach. It's, our beach it's the Chicago trips. beach. Yeah. All right, so we ran out of sand, so we're refilling our buckets and we're using a screen to kind of filter it even more. That way we don't get any little pieces of rock in there, see that? So even though this is really clean sand, you're still gonna get some of this. And uh, since I don't have a pickup truck, I am really, really taking advantage of the fact that I have a hatchback car. So I filled up my kid's little kiddie pool 
with uh, I think five bags of sand from Home Depot. And it's just been in the back of my truck, I mean my Tesla, for the last few days. I've had to kind of shuffle it around and let it sit in the sun because it's gotta be very dry. It won't feed through the tube if it's wet. So there you have it. You gotta do whatever you gotta do to make things work. All right, I got some more safety equipment. These goggles that wrap around your face are excellent. Um, a face shield would be a good idea as well. Other than that, just have fun with it. It's like 100 degrees out today and uh, this is the perfect, perfect day to do this. And I feel kind of like a Ghostbuster right now. -na 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 Now, I'm not saying your neighbors are gonna like this, but it doesn't create any dust at all because of the water. Uh, obviously, there's gonna be a mess on the ground, but it's, it's just natural sand. All right guys, so I've been blasting for about two hours and then I stopped for about 30 minutes. So everything is dry and you can see that we're getting a little bit of surface rust. So this is totally normal because it's bare metal. That actually starts to form within minutes of you blasting it away after it dries. Um, so no need to worry about any of that. We will be coating this entire frame and one of the steps in preparation is a rust converter. So that's gonna take care of any of this stuff. So don't worry about blasting it and then trying to coat it immediately after. That's impossible to do. You're gonna blast the whole frame. It's gonna kind of flash like this and that's okay. But overall, the sand is doing a great job at getting into all of these nooks and crannies. And if you guys wanna compare this DIY project to the professional alternative, that would be literally shipping this entire frame to a company for it to be blasted and you'd be in like two, $3,000 to get that done, depending on where you are and where the shop is. So we're maybe gonna have like $150 into this entire project. But yes, I'm sure sending out your entire frame to a company like that will have a better result. Um, but for the cost difference, this is gonna be more than adequate, especially once you guys see this thing coated. It's gonna look so good. At this point, I'm gonna blast the rear frame and we'll hit the differential as well. So I can show you how the sand does in an area that has a little bit more rust scale than up front.
All right, and there you go. This was definitely the worst part of the frame. Just these little pocketed areas where the dirt and water is just kind of sitting there for years. And we're able to get it right back down to bare metal. You can even see the factory seam in here. And this is all obviously super strong and sturdy. And here's a little sneak peek at the differential. So it definitely cleans that up as well. So I just wanted to show you how an abrasive disc would work on a drill. A uh, die grinder might be a better tool for this, but just to give you an idea here. It'll do it, it'll get down to that bare metal for sure. And there might be more aggressive pads possibly, but the sand just does this much quicker. This would take a while and it's not gonna be able to get into any of the nooks and crannies either. I'm also gonna try out this more aggressive pad as well. We'll see what this can do. Not bad. This actually might not be a bad idea for the very bottom of the frame, especially the flat surfaces. So we can use the sand to kind of get in the C channel of the frame and clean that all out where this would not be feasible. Um, but the bottom, unless we lift up this entire frame, it's gonna be a little bit difficult with the sand. So I might end up just using one of these. We'll probably experiment with some other discs as well, just for the bottom flat surface. All right, guys, we have run out of gas in the pressure washer, um, but I just wanted to show you guys something because if you're using one of these $30 adapters for the sand, it does get clogged up. So I have Peter, of course, and uh, he is basically just keeping this thing at right at the perfect level. You can sometimes let it go and it'll just suck the sand in naturally. And once you get in one of those grooves, don't stop. Um, but it is kind of annoying. And honestly, I think this would take like at least double the time if I didn't have another guy. That sounds stupid, but you know what I mean? <laughs> double the time if I didn't have a guy just doing this because it does get clogged all the time. Um, so anyway, just something to keep in mind. Uh, there are some pitfalls to doing this DIY style. All right, guys. Well, after about 16 hours of Peter and I blasting away at the lightning frame, we went from this nasty, nasty little thing all the way to this. And overall, I gotta say for a DIY project, I'm really happy with the results. It's a ton of work though. And obviously you need to have the right place to do this. You're probably not gonna do this on a neighborhood street. Definitely don't do it inside of your garage. But if you guys have somewhere to do sandblasting and you're on a tight budget on your restoration project, this is a very feasible option. And just look at some of these before and after shots. We had a decent amount of flaky, scaly rust, especially in the back. Again, nothing structural, but it just doesn't look good. And our coating's not gonna adhere properly to it. So that's the reason we're doing all this is because we're gonna coat the entire frame. It's gonna look like it's all painted black, which essentially it will be, but it's gonna be a special coating that is gonna protect our frame basically for the rest of time. So we blasted the differential, that'll get coated as well. We hit some of the suspension components also. The heads of the bolts have been blasted. So overall, this is gonna look kinda like the frame did, back in 2002 when it rolled off the showroom floor. And we still have a lot more work to do. We have to replace all of the body mounting hardware. And then we do have to do a little bit of touch up work on the bottom of the frame, which I think might be easier once we get this thing on the lift and we can use a grinder just on the flat surfaces. But the pressure washer has done an excellent job inside of the C channel of the frame, all of the nooks and crannies, all of the cavities are now cleaned. And yeah, a picture or a video is worth a thousand words. And just take a look at the before and take a look at the after. I could not be happier with how this turned out. All right, guys, that will do it for today's video. I am totally burnt out and uh, yeah, going home like this has not been fun. I need to get a shower here at the shop. Um, but I hope you guys will join me for the next SBT Lightning video where while we continue to wait for the engine to come back from the machine shop and our pistons and rods, which are on a slight back order, we continue on with the frame and just doing everything else so that once our engine is done and we build it, we can literally just plop it in, get the cab and the bed back on, and I'll have my pickup truck again right in time for probably Chicago winter. Um, but anyway, if you enjoyed the video, give it a big thumbs up, share the video with your friends, subscribe if you haven't already, and most importantly, have an excellent day. I'll catch all of you in the next video.